Well, here we are. We're reflecting on a big moment in, 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 poli in politics and in, and in history. I wonder, what are you feeling now? Are you feeling celebration? Are you feeling frustration? How do you describe your feelings? Well, I'm, I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm just feeling glad that I survived and that I'm here and meeting all of these people that we work so hard with, you know, particularly when you see Senator Mitchell coming forward, you know, and with his health issues and he made an outstanding contribution to our peace process. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just glad to be, and to meet also some people who I haven't seen in some time, you know, who have retired from politics or went on to do some, something else. So I have, I have that sense of uh, sort of quiet uh, achievement. I, I don't think it should be a, a lap of honour. You know, I've, I've, it's the next 25 years we need to be trying to figure out and to, to make progress. And right, well, let's, let's talk about, about the future. A, a, a big theme, a big undercurrent of, of what's been discussed this week of the entire, the entire you know, any, any reflection on the, the Good Friday Agreement is the way that the peace agreement delivered peace. Now, do you believe in your heart that, yes, we've seen petrol bombs thrown on the street in recent days, there was an attempt to kill a, a police officer, but do you believe violence and killing on the scale that we remember from the days of the Troubles, is that now gone for good? Yes, in my view, yes, because the, 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 the major combatant force from the Republican side was the Irish Republican Army, the IRA. And it has left the stage. It, it uh, came in, I suppose, in broad support, took a number of initiatives, and then ceased to come. You might get these dastardly actions by small, non-representative groups, but it will never go back to what it was before. And that's because the will of the people is behind the peace and also behind the need to make political Pro progress, but that's you know, another issue. Just in terms of your 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 question about peace, you know the peace is here, and here to stay, and hopefully uh, will will continue to take root, and those small groups will fade away as well. Well, that is an optimistic message. And on those those small groups, at the height of the troubles, there was a, a measure of support for the provisional IRA among the nationalist and republican community in Northern Ireland. Is that feeling, that sentiment now, do you think, extinct? Well, there's no support at all of any consequence for these small groups. You know, and, and I'm, I'm prepared to go and talk to them if they would talk to me to persuade them that if, if, if they're at all genuine about their republicanism or about Irish unity, there's not a peaceful way to achieve that. The Good Friday Agreement has, as part of its protocols, a referendum in which the people will decide the future. So yeah. the, the, the focus of anybody who's genuinely about the future should be to persuade those who may have a different view of the merits of yeah. ending the union. You know, I, I want to see an end to English government. Well, that's rule. interesting, and that's an active offer. I imagine it's within your power to tap into some channel of some kind, to reach out to the people who've been responsible for that kind of violence. Have you done so? Has anyone done so on your behalf? Yeah, well, we've made a number of efforts to engage with them. Thus far, they've refused to engage with us. Uh, but let's not over-exaggerate. Uh, you know, there's greater violence in London. There's greater violence in Dublin. It isn't political, of course, in its uh, nature, but you know, we're, we're in a much better place here than if you look at other countries than Ukraine, than Palestine, you know, than Libya or Syria. So that's, you know, bank without taking it for granted, the, the huge gains for peace that have been made. And, and the main thing is the prevailing will of the vast, vast majority of people is for the peace to continue and for the political process to work. Okay, just lastly on, on that before we move on. Um, the, it is, it is a threat to the peace of mind collectively of people in, in Northern Ireland to see this violence taking place. When and if people know who the, the perpetrators are, should they make contact with the authorities and pass on that knowledge? Because back in the day, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, of course, pe people might be reluctant to do that. Uh, for They might feel under threat and so on. But yes, I think we have a duty to stand up to the up, up against these actions. Right. On the politics, Joe Biden has just left the island of Ireland, but he was at the Irish Parliament. He suggested 
seemed pretty clear that he felt the British government, the UK government, should do more alongside the Irish government to get power sharing up and running. Do you believe the UK government should do more? And if you do, tell me what more could and should be done by the British government. Well, first of all, I don't think this Tory government and the last number of prime ministers that you've had are invested at all in this process. Uh, well, didn't Sunak, which is going to bring about the, the Windsor framework through a lot of personal effort? Is that, is that not fair? Well, that, that's fair enough insofar as it goes. But they're also tearing up the human rights aspect of the Good Friday Agreement. They're tearing up the programme of protocols that were put in place to deal with legacy issues at the Stormont House Agreement. So they're, they're, they're ripping those up in defence of their own operatives and military forces and so on. But what you, your question directly, to answer it directly, what should they do? Part of the structures set out in the Good Friday Agreement are for what is called an intergovernmental ministerial conference. And that's to deal exactly with the problems that we have at the moment, that the two governments come in yeah. and start to make uh, progress where it's possible in the absence of the parties or a party uh, doing that. I also think the government in London should start to consider its responsibility is to leave the place at some point by organising the referendum which is, is uh, contained in the Good Friday Agreement. Now, I don't want to see that foisted upon people without warning. I don't want another Brexit. Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald has set out the need for a planning process for people to come together to get expert support to deal with issues of concern about health services, about integration, about governance, about rights, about identity. So there's, there's lots of work that the two governments can be doing. Yes, I, I just wonder, are you minded to give Rishi Sunak credit for the work done done so far? I mean, your relationship with Tony Blair, it's fair to say, was at times quite warm. Now, you haven't, haven't been able to and haven't built anything like that relationship with the present British Prime Minister, but what would you say about the work that he's done? Well, well first of all, that, that's not my responsibility at this time. That's the responsibility sure, of, our, that. of our leader, Mary, Mary Lou Macdonald. And of course, we, we would give credit insofar as it's, it's uh, significant to the, the Windsor uh, House Agreement. But where did that come from? That, that came from the British government tearing up the protocol. And where did that come from? That came from the British government foisting Brexit upon us, contrary to the wishes of the people who lived here. So yeah. you know, if we want to take the, the short view of history, yes, fair enough, he, he has straightened out a, a, a means to uh, sort out the relationship with the European Union, uh, but he has not fulfilled his obligations in terms of the Good Friday Agreement, and he needs to do so. I mean, I, I, I could, if he were here, he'd say Brexit was a consequence of a vote of the British people. You would no doubt say the people of Northern Ireland did not feel the same way, and that would, yeah. that's how that would, that would play out. On the question of... Uh, I also have to say that I have lost track of your Prime Ministers in recent, <laughs> in recent times. There have been a few. <laughs> on, on the question of... Uh, the United Ireland. Um, I spoke to Bertie Ahern and, and asked, how, where did that ambition now feature in his imagination of, of, of events in the future? He suggested, he believed it was possible to consider a, a United Ireland coming into being by the end of this decade. But what are your thoughts on that? Well, well, I think it should be preceded, as I've said before, by that careful process of inclusive planning. Uh, I'm, I'm loath to put a time on it, uh, I, I do think this, and Mary Lou Macdonald has described it as a decade of opportunity. So I think that Bertie may be right in terms of he's chiming with what Mary Lou said. There's a possibility, there's a potential to sort this out. But you see, if, if, you, if, if you consider where we've come from, and, and we're now at a point where all the players that weren't talking to Sinn Féin 25 years ago, we now have respectful relationships with them. We are in fact, indeed have friendships with some of them, including within the unionist parties. So we should be starting then to start challenging each other. If the unions want the union, which they say they do, well, then let them tell us about the merits of it. Let them tell us about how this place can be more inclusive, how people can have their rights, uh, and let us, for our part, do the same thing in terms of Irish unity, point, point out the merits of us governing ourselves free of English government mm -hmm. rules. So I think all of that could be done gently. Uh, this is uh, 2023, 
you know, over the next two or three, four years, you know, and then we would go into our referendum if that was done properly. All right, so that's your ambition. I mean, I'm, I'm just here till Wednesday. I've been here a couple of days, so, so I know nothing, but I've been struck by the dynamic that I'm seeing around me of personal relationships. You just say to me, you've got that, that some, as it were, on your side, have friendships on yeah. the other side of the divide. Now, that, that really strikes me. Do you say, can you tell me you have friends in the, among unionist leaders, unionist politicians in the unionist committee, just genuine friends? Yes. Given all the background. Yes. In some, way, in some way it's hard to imagine. I know Martin McGuinness got on famously well with Ian Paisley, yeah. but have you got unionist friends? Yes, I would, I would like to consider those who I've worked with. You know, we don't go out for a pint with each other, but we, we certainly are very, very friends. And we're glad to see each other. Uh, we know that we can talk with some confidence uh, about issues which are annoying people or which are difficult for, for people. So yes, I'm, I'm pleased, but I, I have to say I've always had friends in what we could call the Northern Protestant uh, section, which, which might not necessarily be people who are avowedly uh, unions. And I've always, always had friends with uh, people from the Loyalist section. Uh, an interesting dynamic during the Good Friday Agreement talks, that while the DUP left when Sinn Féin went in and the UUP refused to talk to us, the Loyalists had no problem whatsoever. The, the, the David Irvines and the Billy Hutchinsons and the Gary McMichaels just immediately shook their hands and talked. Jerry Adams, good to talk Thank to you. Thank you, John, and good luck.